Hey everybody, it's Cyborg, and I am joined by Temp, and today we have Year 5, Issue number 16. So thank you guys for tuning in, definitely appreciate it. Thank you for joining us along the ride. Like the video, subscribe, plenty more to come. We're almost done with this series, but plenty of other stuff to come as well. On that note, let's go ahead and jump right into it. So if you haven't checked out the previous ones, full spoilers ahead. We start off in San Francisco, and they are just outside of the regime's prison. <clears throat> and it's Barry and Hal talking up on the Golden Gate Bridge. And they're saying that they essentially know that Sinestro knows who's done it, but they but he won't tell him. And that he's, he's a creep, and they could just ask Victor Zaz... Who, you know, who was the one that put him up to it, but then Hal makes mention, and I like this line where Hal says, I don't know, how can you believe anything he says? And then Barry fires back with, or maybe you will believe him, and that means we are standing with a cold-blooded killer. And they both just kind of think about that for a second. Um, I thought that was interesting. Because, well, for one, it was a decent line, because it's true, but two, I mean, they're they're actively working with Sinestro, who is a cold-blooded killer, so, I mean, yeah, why yeah. does that matter? I mean, <laughs> if they find out that Superman's a cold-blooded killer, which, I mean, he already is, but, I mean, they, they, they're working with Sinestro, who is, like, a, I mean, he, his, the Yellow Lanterns are made up of people that are just, like, teeth, as one guy Gardner pointed out at one point. Yeah, teeth and sharp pieces, pretty yeah. much. So, yep. Anyways, so they continue talking, and eventually, and they're talking about the Joker Underground and how that doesn't, they don't believe that it was the Bizarro Superman, that they're thinking that it might have been Superman, but they're not really sure. Cyborg's not giving them any answers, and Hal even says, Barry, what the hell have we become? And Barry says, unless you're going to do something about it, maybe you should stop asking. What a smug prick. Like, just this... <laughs> like, what an awful thing to say. Like, well, are we going to do anything about it? No. Nope. So let's just not even think about the crappy things we're doing. Like, just, yeah. Just awful. Anyways, then we cut to Batgirl, and she's outside Washington, D.C. And we find out what she's doing. She is not the getaway driver in the monorail just revving the thing up ready to go <clears throat> she's the one that's running the emp scrambler that's allowing the lights and every all the electronics to be cut of course making it so cyborg can't call for the rest of the help and the backup so meanwhile batman and batwoman are fighting off cyborg and hawk girl and they're just trying to take cyborg out they go back and forth hawk girl and uh, batwoman have some good exchanges here and batwoman did I say Batgirl? I don't know. Batwoman, anyways, has a sick burn on Hawkgirl, and she says the regime has no ethics. Because she says she's a slave to ethics. And that was really... That was a good line. Meanwhile, we cut to Superman, and he's still trying to find Raven. And he finds Danny Chase, who can turn into a phantasm. Phantasm, right? Did I get that right? No, it's phantasm. That's okay. correct. I was thinking Mask of the Phantasm. That's... That is not right. Anyways, Very different. Yes. Phantasm, and he obliges, so then he takes Superman to Raven. She explains, you know, obviously that Trigon was taken away from her. She's only half herself now. And Superman explains that the insurgency manipulated Trigon and purposely used him against the regime and against Mixias Pitlick and wanted... And they wanted him banished, so this kind of seemingly gets Raven rethinking things. She doesn't answer, she doesn't explain what she's going to do, or that she will join the fight and re, you know, join them. But we're left off not knowing what the heck she's going to do. Anyways, cut back to the action with Batman, Batwoman, Cyborg, and Hawkgirl. Eventually, Batman gets the best of Cyborg, and Hawkgirl gets knocked out by Batwoman. Batman and Batwoman are taking Cyborg out, and all of a sudden, Superman once again crashes the party. Man, he always shows up at just the most inconvenient times. He 
knocks them both down. All of a sudden, Hawkman's ship just crashes through the wall like a badass. He steps outside of the ship, and his mace is glowing, and he asks Superman if he's ready to die. So, clearly, he did manage to last with Mongol, seemingly. So he's either... like he was lying to Batman so he could keep it for himself, then. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it was kind of a fool on Batman and a fool on the audience. So, yeah, he kept it to him, kept it for himself, and we continue on the next chapter as well. And this is made readily apparent by Batman that he did not, this was not part of the plan. He was supposed to give the kryptonite to him, and they were going to use it to keep Clark captive. But Hawkman's going into business for himself here, and he wants to kill Superman. He doesn't want any half measures, so he starts beating Superman down with the mace. He's enjoying watching him bleed for the first time that he's been able to witness. He is just beating the crap out of him. He's just beating him in the back with his mace. It's all bloody. He's enjoying it. He makes a sick face. Batman is essentially saying, let's just get out of here. Let's grab Cyborg. This is what we came for. We can't do anything about this. Let's just leave Hawkman. The other uh, members of the regime are coming. We don't have much time. We don't... I mean, they don't have enough time to stop him if they really wanted to anyway, so... They just need to get the hell out of there. And Batwoman goes along with it. But seemingly it is too late because Hawkgirl wakes up and she's questioning Katar and what he's doing. He says, you know what? If you want to fight again, we can do it. But I came back here for you. He took you away from me. He bitch slaps her with the mace. So more spousal abuse. Great stuff here. <laughs> just oh, like, well, it's a Hawkman signature, you know? Yeah, he just like always gets to slap her around <laughs> Anyways, all of a sudden, a red beam goes across, and Superman's not done yet. He blasts him with his eye laser beam, and then Flash comes in and takes the mace away from Hawkman, so Calvary has arrived. <clears throat> Superman wants a one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one fight with Hawkman. Batman and Batwoman are long gone at this point, so Superman wants a one-on-one -on -one fight with Hawkman. Um, so... Hawkman's all pissed off and can't get his emotions in check, as we've come to know, and he just gets his ass obliterated by Superman. Doesn't get one punch in, he just gets slammed over and over and over, gets his teeth shattered, and he's dead. Hawkgirl seems upset by this. She didn't want him to die, obviously, and Superman wants to know where Cyborg is, and then all of a sudden he passes out. For whatever reason, seemingly he's poisoned by the kryptonite, and Wonder Woman tells Flash to get it the hell out of here, which he does. We see Batman, Batwoman, and Batgirl, along with Cyborg, making the escape. They're kind of messing with his circuits, just trying to get temporary access to his systems, just to get what they're looking for. And then they'll have the smoking gun, which is, as you alluded to, it's probably the joker underground footage to get the citizens on his side as well as the other regime members to know what he's up to so yeah that's where we're left off thoughts um well i mean there, there's a there's a lot of places starting points we can go off here uh the three in my mind are the art hawkman and the smoking gun uh the smoking guns I mean, I, I'm not really sure what they're going with here because they've done this before. It sounds like the world, or what, if they prove Superman's a cold-blooded murderer and is crazy, didn't we already do that? Are they trying to convince the other superheroes, maybe, or are they trying to convince the other uh, former Justice League members? I, I wonder where they're going with this because I feel like we've done this before. At the same, well, they have, but last time he had the yellow ring. If he doesn't put the yellow ring on this time because of Wonder Woman not being okay with that and not running a fear campaign like that. Yeah. Then citizens fearing him won't power him this time. So maybe they think it's okay this time. They're retrying what they originally were going to try with Black Canary way back when and year two. So, yeah. Interesting stuff yeah. there. But yeah, I'm with you. I'm not really sure what the ultimate plan is here what's the ultimate goal that they're looking to achieve by doing this not really sure it could be a little bit of all those things that you just mentioned um the next topic you said the arts 
Yeah, there's like a record number of butt shots in this issue. That's including Danny Chase, by the way. Like, there's a ton <laughs> of ass shots, and you just—it's it, distracting. Like, um, men and women, it's, they're everywhere. It's yeah. just, uh, I it, noticed it's, one particular was bad. Well, bad woman. Yeah. yeah, she's just like bending over while her and Batman. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it, later in the same. Well, maybe we're looking at a different one. I'm looking at the one near the end of uh, the, the issue. On the God, these numbers are driving me nuts. But um, the first scrolling. chapter. Yeah, near the end of the first chapter, she's knocked out on the ground. Um, there's oh, one, yeah, and yeah. Then halfway through like, the second issue, she's in the same pose. <laughs> it seems I'm like... talking about... No, 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 in the beginning. I'm bad. talking yeah. about the... Yeah, that one's clearly yeah, very um, butt shot there. But I was talking... I was thinking of oh. the one where Batman and Batwoman are pulling Cyborg out like while Hawkman's getting the best of Superman. Yeah, and her, her back is arced like 60 degrees for yeah. reasons. Yeah, and her like cape is just like resting at the top of her button. <laughs> yeah, <it's laughs> odd, <laughs> odd thing to do, but yeah. And, but it's not even like you know a few scrolls down, we get a, a, a like a prime shot of Hawkman's very defined backside. So it's just, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's it's a little fetishy, but maybe yeah. it's all in my head. Maybe I'm the problem. Maybe the butt's all in my brain. Yeah. Who knows? Who knows, man? Um, but yeah, I just. Uh, uh, I don't know. The art's actually not too bad. It's a little weird, but it's not too, too... Nothing really bad stuck out of my mind. Oh, my um, God. There's another one that's very prominent. <laughs> um, it's the very first... Or, it's the second panel on the second chapter where Batgirl's... Or, not Batgirl, but Batwoman's looking behind her. It's right after Hawkman smashes oh, Superman's yeah. knees out from under him. Yeah, she's, like, looking backwards. <laughs> it's just, like, pure <laughs> ass just right there. <laughs> We even go above and look at Hawkman's junk, dude. Like fucking, it's <laughs> it's, it's just they start the panel with just Hawkman's fucking ass. Yeah, well, just, at least uh, it's like shaded there. Like it's just like it's, it's dark and you can't really see the crease. But anyways, you were saying yeah. It's, but so the art seems okay to me. I, nothing really crazy stuck out. Like no. nothing like Black Adam's fucked up face or Superman's candle wax shit. Like this for the most part seemed pretty good. Right. Um. Man, Hotman did not have a good showing in the Injustice universe. Oh my gosh. Yeah, he he's a jerk. Ass- he's just an asshole jerk. He should have been on the regime. Like, he's fully, <laughs> like, he is all about their style. Very high emotion and just all about aggression. Yeah, he would have crippled a hundred people. Like, holy shit, man. Yeah, like, maybe oh. they should have had Hawkman and Hawkgirl be uh, Hawkgirl on the insurgency side and <laughs> Hawkman <laughs> pro-regime. That would have made more sense to me. But anyways. Oh, man. Well, it is kind of weird. Because I still have no idea why Hawkgirl is siding with Superman. Like, yeah. I still have no clue what her motivations are. Yeah. All, all we got from, so far, her in the comics, reasoning-wise, was she she's not, like, a servant to a man dressed as a bat. Like, maybe that's her thing, is, like, <laughs> since Batman is leading the insurgency, that's her problem. She just does not like Batman. <laughs> Yeah, she, the, the bad thing is kind of weird to her. So, yeah, regime all the way. Um, God, the mace is cool. I, I think that was a really nice touch with the, the kryptonite mace. That yeah. looks really sick. Um, Definitely. Uh, I guess as far as closing thoughts, um, I don't know. Were you satisfied when Hawkman died? I mean, not satisfied might be the right, right word. <laughs> were, did, you, did you feel like this was... Oh, God. Did it feel literally... Fuck. You'll get it. <laughs> this... I just pull out a paper, start reading it, and, like, keep checking <laughs> in on you every few minutes. Like, it's like popping the... in grapes. <laughs> put the paper down, like, just peer over the paper, like, have my glasses on. Huh? Oh, how's that going? How's that going on figuring out how you're going to structure that? Well, let's say satisfactory. On a literary level, did his death feel satisfactory? I'm not really a big Hawkman fan. I like Hawk Girl. I mean, I'm kind of with you in the the boat of, you know, if you're going to have a male and female version of a character, I'll prefer the female most times. Like Generally, so, yes. I think in women in comics tend to be just more interesting. They're more, they're flexible. Their personalities are more flexible. I feel like there's a lot more dynamics going on. And, and Razor, Hawk- I think, is in that boat as well. I think that's why Razor was such a proponent of Poison Ivy as opposed yeah. to Swamp Thing. Sure. I think um, Hawk Girl is just, yeah. I've always... To me, Hawk Girl has just always been more interesting, especially in like the animated series. Hawkman's always just kind of like the jerk. 
from what I've experienced. So yeah, I, I, I like Hawk Girl, not a fan of Hawkman. So to see him die like that, it was quick. But I don't know what else you would do with him. I mean, I guess you could have saved it for like the finale or something of the season or the year, I should say. But it was something. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah. I can't really say it was bad, but yeah, it could have been better, sure. Well, Hot Girl especially gets you know strong points from the Justice League series, uh, the animated series. So I've always liked her from that. Yeah, I, I, I just, I mean, you just, we talk about male versus female counterparts. This is especially true here when really Hot Girl, at least even if her motivations are super unclear, at least she has a dynamic personality that works well off everyone and works differently with everyone, right. as opposed to Hawkman, whose entire personality is touch me wife, like that's his whole yeah. character. So. Yeah. Yeah, that big, yeah. No, again, I, we've talked about this before, but Batwoman has been a very strong part of this comic. Oh, um, yeah. It, she, every time, I think she wins me over a little bit more every time she's involved in stuff. I think just the sheer, how much she's done and been a part of, like, at the beginning, it was just like, okay, there's Batwoman. Or you say Batgirl or Batwoman? Batwoman. Batwoman, yeah. I'm always getting, like confused at which one i'm wondering said. if i said that girl but that yeah i know i'm never sure person. which one i said that's why i'm always confused um, it's hard because technically they're synonyms yeah. they go purely by age so it's <laughs> yeah, different yeah, but. but yeah i i agree with you i i really hope she's a premier skin but i'm also kind of like that butthole pucker is coming back <laughs> and i have a feeling she's probably gonna die by the end of this year and i'm like Ugh, please don't yeah. happen but we don't see her in the Injustice game, so... And she's not in Injustice 2, unless she's a premiere skin, so... Probably gonna be one of those characters that dies in the last issue, or the one that's before it, to kind of have that big emotional moment like they like to do, so... And she's been around forever. She's like a veteran at this point. She's been in, like, yeah. every year in a prominent role, so... She's popped a lot of green pills, man. Yeah, I'm not... I'm not looking forward to it. I got to be honest with you. I think, other, I mean, we had Alfred, which was kind of an emotional death for sure. I did not want to see Alfred die, but before Alfred, it's been a while and Batwoman would be one of those that I'm kind of like, I feel like I'd miss if she does die. So now I'm kind of like, I'm, I'm dreading that because I don't want to see her go because I think she would make, I mean, if hell, I'd buy her as a DLC character. Honestly, at this point, like, I well, would yeah, accept I would her as too. a DLC character as her own slot because I think they can make her unique enough to have fun with it. But at the very least, a premier skin, if it's possible for Batman, I think yeah, if we're doing top three premier skins, she'd be up there for me. So anyways. she'd be high up as well. And I'm glad you mentioned that because something does give me hope. Uh, this issue was published in 2016, right? Yeah, these this year I think just ended last year. Right. So I think they had the Injustice 2 schemata kind of put together by this point, and I think if Premier Skins were on the board, it was to their benefit to save this character. So I really think... Uh, I, I mean, yeah. I, I was worried. Too. I thought this was the issue. She was going to get Huntress Oh, to. I did. I did, too. I thought, oh, she's... When Superman shows up, I thought he was going to destroy her or something. Like, I thought it was going to be a huge thing. So on that note, she yeah, she managed to live... At least for now, but yeah, this is not good. I'm, I'm Here's what I I'm don't want to happen. I don't want her to be like, I just can't do the fight anymore, and Batman's gonna find her like with next to a bottle of pills, and she just doesn't wake up. Like that's what I don't want them to do. But I feel like if any character they did that to, it might be her because I don't think they can keep doing the Huntress thing to characters. I don't think they can keep following that pattern. It's just it loses impact every time. They accidentally or Superman intentionally kills someone. You, I, I feel like you, if you keep going down that road over and yeah, over again, that's and true. I, so I hope she lives. I, I'm I'm not going to say optimistic, but I think it's it's in the realm of plausibility for sure. I think my preferred method because I feel like there's going to be something that takes her out of the battle for a while that explains her absence in the Injustice game, or at least the fact that she wasn't mentioned, as far as I'm aware. Obviously, because they didn't write these comics until way later, but I guess she was in year one, obviously. Um, but what I was going to say is my preference would be maybe she gets injured, which puts her out, and then that way they can always write her back in when they want to. And Injustice yeah. 2, if they want to go down that route, but 
Yeah, at this at this point, I'm definitely pulling for her. She's got the longevity veteran factor at this point. That like, out of all the characters in the the comic book, she's definitely one of. She's so ingrained with the story and so pro insurgency and one of the loyal members that have stayed with it from the beginning all the way through till now. You gotta see her in the games. I I would feel whether it be premiere skin or DLC character. Get, I, I, yeah, I'm pulling for her. So, anyways, on that note, guess we'll find out soon. Next few days here. Um, you guys take care. We will see you next time for issue number 17. Just four issues left. So, we are almost at the end of the road here. And then we have Injustice 2's comics starting up, which we will get more into our plans on that as we finish up this series. We will explain what we're going to do with that. So, anyways, you guys take care. Have a good one. See you tomorrow. Later, everybody.